Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to day 17 of the online learning course presented by the Paradise Academy. I hope everyone is doing well. In today's class, we will be carrying on from what we learned in the past two days, which is sukun. Once again, sukun, which is also known as jism, occurs on letters that has no vowel signs. And when they occur, we join it to the letter immediately before it that does have a vowel sign. <clears throat> In the past couple of lessons, we joined wow sakin to a zebr and a pesh. In today's class, we will go through examples of ya sakin being joined onto a zebr. We will see how it is pronounced, so repeat after me. Hamza ya zebr ay. Ba ya zebr bay. تا يا زبرتي ثا يا زبرثي جيم يا زبرجي حا يا زبرحي خا يا زبرخي دال يا زبردي ذال يا زبرذي غا يا زبرري ز يا زبر زي سين يا زبر سي شين يا زبر شي صاد يا زبر صي ضاد يا زبر ضي طا يا زبر طي ضا يا زبر ضي عين يا زبر عي غين يا زبر غي فا يا زبر في قاف يا زبر قي كاف يا زبر كي لام يا زبر لي ميم يا زبر مي نون يا زبر ني واو يا زبر وي ها يا زبر هي همزة يا زبر أي يا يا زبر يي Well done. Now let's spell out some words. So repeat after me. همزة يا زبر أي نون زبر ن أي ن أين next word لام يا زبر لي سين زبر س ليس ليس next word عين يا زبر عي نون يا زبر ني عيني نون زيرني عينيني عينيني well done. I will now hand over to Kari Hanisab. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In today's lesson, we're going to recap of Surah Al Kafirun. Let's start reading. A'udhu billahi min ash rajim. سورة الكافرون مكية بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا 
تم آب دون میں لکم دین کم ولی دین We're going to read one more time. But remember guys, the ayah third and ayah number fifth, they both are exactly the same. But in the fourth, uh, fourth ayah, it says, وَلَا أَنَا Instead of أَنَا So we're not going to say أَنَا We're going to skip the alif. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عبدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عبد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عبدون ما أعبد لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَدِينَ جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Lesson number two نسيحة In today's lesson we're going to talk about cleansiness and I know in our previous lesson we've also talked about this topic but because we're talking about adab, etiquettes and manners and part of our etiquette and manners is to be clean, to be presentable, to look nice. And we're going to talk about this today, inshallah. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna Allah jameelin yuhibbul jamal. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beautiful and he loves beauty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is handsome, he's beautiful, he's pure from all kind of faults. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clean. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people that are clean, that are neat, that are presentable. That's why we, when we sing the praise of Allah, we say, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah, because He's pure from all kinds of faults, all kinds of filth, all kinds of dirt. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed is the most pure one, the most handsome one, the most beautiful one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes it when His creation also are presentable, they're neat, they're nice, and they're clean from all kinds of faults and all kinds of sins and all kinds of dirt. So it's very, very important to be clean and free from all kinds of dirt. And we should remember that doesn't mean we have to have the latest clothes or the most expensive clothes to look beautiful and handsome. No, we just need to be presentable. So many times you see people and kids that wear not the most expensive clothes but they look neat and tidy and presentable and, and on the other hand you see people with very expensive clothes but even then they will not look presentable once Abdul ibn Masood he narrated a hadith which the Prophet said no one will enter paradise who has an atom's weight of pride in his heart so nobody will enter Jannah who has even a slight atom weight of pride, the qabr, in his heart. So a man, he asked Nabi Sassam, what if a man likes his clothes to look good and his shoes to look good? The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu replied, Inna Allah jameelan yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful and look beauty. Pride means denying the truth and looking down on people. Yes, you can look presentable, you can look nice and if you got something nice, you should wear it. Here pride doesn't mean that, you know, very nice because here pride means where you deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you deny the truth and you look down on people. And that's the pride that the Prophet of Allah is talking about. So looking good and looking nice, there's nothing wrong with it. But in, in Islam it is encouraged and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is beauty, beautiful and he loves beauty. So, as a Muslim... How do we stay clean and how can we look beautiful and handsome? First of all, with our body. 
We should always wash our hands before meals. We've been talking a lot about germs and bacteria. And before meals, we should always wash our hands and not to dry them with the towel because towels always contain germs. So we should always wash our hands and leave them wet. We should brush our teeth twice a day. Again, the dentist people will always recommend that twice a day you brush your teeth. But Alhamdulillah, in our Islam, when we have a miswak with with every namaz, with every time you do wuzu, you are encouraged to do miswak. So as well as doing our toothbrush, we should also use the miswak of the Prophet wasallam. And your namaz is increased by so much by using a miswak. Like that we should have a bath regularly. So every two, three days we should go for a bath. We should clean ourselves properly. That doesn't mean we should stay in there for hours and waste water. No, we should only be in the bath for five, ten minutes, clean ourselves properly and thoroughly, and then we should come out. We should wear clean clothes. Every two days we should change our clothes. Alhamdulillah, we have clothes and we have the facilities to wash our clothes. We have washing machines in our house. So the thing is, we should change our clothes. We should change our socks because they can get smelly. And they can get dirty because when we wear our clothes all day at school, at home, they can become sweaty. So we should change our clothes. Even the angels of Allah run away from that person that smell out the masjid. And so many times we see that person who's just played football and he's all sweaty and he's come to the mosque. And he's thinking, mashallah, I'm reading, I'm reading nice and beautiful namaz. But instead, he's giving harm to others because other people are struggling because of his sweat and his smell. So we should, you know, we should be wary about these things. And we shouldn't just go to the masjid stinking and smelling. Because we give the grief, we, should, we give hurt to others and we give hurt to the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should comb our hair. The Prophet of Allah used to comb his hair as well and look presentable. We should comb our hair, not look scruffy. We should wash yourself properly after using the toilet. It's stinja, and we've talked about this previously. Every time we go to the toilet, we should use toilet paper and water. Like that, we should clip our nails every two weeks. We should you know, be clicking, clipping our nails. Again, this is encouraged by the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what about our surroundings? How do we keep them clean? Every morning when we wake up, we should make our own beds. We shouldn't leave it to our mum. We should get up. We should make sure that when we get up, our room looks presentable. So we should took everything in and make our bed properly and make sure our be bedroom is nice and clean and then go downstairs for breakfast. You should put your books, toys away neatly and they're not left around. So only time we see we leave things around and other people might trip over and fall down and get hurt. Or sometimes what happens is we leave things about and then the next morning we're looking for them and we can't find them. That's because we didn't take care of them properly the first time. We should always put our books away neatly, our toys away. Whatever you use, use them. Once you've used them, put them away. And don't leave it till somebody else. It's all of our responsibility. We're responsible for our own actions. So we should do it ourselves. We shouldn't leave it to our mums and dads and our brothers and sisters. We should do it ourselves. Move anything that may be harmful out of the way. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he encouraged us that whenever you're walking down a path and something harmful out in the way, we should pick you up and move it. And the reward for this is Sadaqah, giving charity. And basically, that is litter picking. So whenever we're walking and we see something that's harmful or dangerous, we should move it to one side or pick you up and throw it into the bin. So our, our Islam teaches us for our environments to be clean and we have the facilities of bins so we should utilize the bins and a lot of people unfortunately they're very ignorant and what they do is they throw the packet crisp packets on floor they throw rubbish on the floor if you go around the takeaway the people food is on the floor and that's why we have mice and we have rats and we all our areas are dirty because we don't take care of it ourselves and we think it's fine just to make rubbish all over the floor. No, if we don't take pride in our areas and our cleanliness, then nobody else is going to do it. And people are going to run away from us because they're going to think these are filthy and dirty people. I don't want to live near them. 
So our Islam always encourages us to be clean. And why? Because Allah Himself is clean. Allah Himself is beautiful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Himself loves beauty. So we ourselves should be beautiful. We should look presentable. And we should always, every time we go to school, every time we're at home, our house, our surroundings should always be nice and clean. It, like I said to you, that doesn't mean it has to be the most expensive stuff. The Prophet of Allah lived his life in poverty, but himself, he was always presentable. He was always, people would like to sit with him and talk to him. Remember, as a Muslim, when we clean ourselves five times a day, when we do a sinja, when we do our wuzu, no smell will come from us. No dirt will come from us because constantly we're washing ourselves, constantly we're cleaning ourselves. So this is the importance of cleansiness. And finally, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabina wa yuhibbu al-mutatahideen Truly Allah loves those who turn onto Him in repentance and love those who purify themselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people that do tawbah every time they commit a sin, a black dot appears in our heart. So well, and as soon as we know that and we feel bad about it, we've done something wrong, we should first of all we should admit to our wrong and we should feel guilty about it. And third step we should ask Allah for forgiveness because Allah that love those people that ask for forgiveness and Allah that loves those people that are purified, that are clean. So one we have to be clean on the outside, our bodies need to be clean, our clothes need to be clean, our environments need to be clean. But also on the inside, our heart and our soul needs to be purified and clean. So every time we do wrong, we commit a sin, we do toba, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those people that are clean on the outside and clean on the inside. May Allah ta'ala give all the tawfi to be clean people and to be good people and those people that are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, today we will be carrying on with our namaz. We will be learning Durud Sharif, which we recite in the Qaida position. So repeat after me. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim Innaka Hamidum Majid Allahumma Barik Ala Muhammadin Wa Ala Ali Muhammadin Kama Barakta Ala Ibrahim وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Now let's read it together. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى Ali Ibrahim Innaka Hamidum Majid Allahumma Barik Ala Muhammadin Wa Ala Ali Muhammadin Kama Barakta Ala Ibrahim Wa Ala Ali Ibrahim Innaka Hamidum Majid